Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. Today I want to show you MA tricks. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not going to show you everything about MA tricks because honestly, I haven't, I don't think, fully grasped it to the very last thing. So today we're just going to cover selection of uh, fixtures. Um, and not, for example, MA tricks in effects. But we're just going to focus on the fixtures today uh, because I built a small set of macros that will actually help you use MA tricks to build some really cool looking pattern and quickly store those as a sequence or a chaser. And you can also tell my voice is a little broken. <laughs> this actually happened five days ago um, at a nice little seminar that I was invited to. Um, at this point, to all my new friends from Gegenlicht11, uh, I love you guys. It was such an amazing week with you. Thank you so much for the um, or for organizing this lobby and, and inviting me. All right. Um, cool. So let's first talk about what Matrix is. And for that, let me just bring up the show file. Matrix in general is just a selection tool. And I think that will make more sense once we kind of select these fixtures and press next. So you might have used that before and have been wondering what the hell this is about. This is literally just about stepping through your selection. And the default mode is that you just step through your selection one fixture at a time. Now what's really cool is that um, the, the order of how you select your fixtures actually matters and you can tell that if you select your fixtures differently and then press next, it will actually honor this selection um, order. And that's also what you see this little caption up here in the upper left hand side. Whenever you select something in the layout view, it's letting you know how this will affect your selection. Um, all right, so Matrix is a selection tool. And the interesting part is that when you press next, it already is activated. So if we take a look here in the programmer, we can see that Matrix is highlighted. And we see that Matrix is active. And now comes the interesting part. There are three more parameters of how you can step through your fixture selection. So this is the simplest option where you really don't have anything else. Um, selected. Uh, the first I want to show you is interleaf. And interleaf is an option where you can select um, how many fixtures you want to have in between two selections. So if we have an interleaf of two, for example, I'm just going to hit next again, then it's going to select every second fixture. So first selected, second is not, third selected, fourth is not. So if we increase this to three, for example, press next again to make it visible, then we can see that every third fixture is selected. And that's really cool when we actually put this to, in this case, five, for example, because now it's going to select every fifth um, fixture, which in this case means that we have columns. How cool is that? Next up is blocks. And blocks is really, really easy to explain. Um, right now we just have a block of one, and blocks is just the number of consecutive fixtures that you want to select. So really easy. If we set this to three, for example, you can see that it's selecting three fixtures at a time. Now what's interesting, I'm just going to turn interleaf off for this demonstration. What's interesting is that um, once you set blocks, that's also dictating how matrix is going to step through your fixture selection. So it's not going um, one fixture at a time now, but instead, um, you know, in groups of three. So not only do you have multiple fixtures selected, but it's also stepping through your fixture selection in three groups, in, in groups of three. So again, this is really cool if in this case we set it to five, for example, because then we actually select our rows. And I'm figuring you already see where this is going. And Matrix is really useful for building nice patterns. All right, let me decrease the blocks again and then uh, show you the last option, that's wings. 
Now Wix is interesting because it kind of um, separates your fixture selection into that many groups um, or that many um, yeah, wings in that case. And what's interesting is that every consecutive wing is mirrored. So if we set this to three wings, for example, and then hit next, then you can see here that I'm pressing next and in the first wing, it's going in the forward direction. It's first going to select the first fixture, second fixture and so on. While in the second wing, which is down here, it's going from the last fixture to the first fixture and then in the third wing, it's going um, from the first to the last fixture again. So let me just press next a few more times here. You should be able to see how that moves. So that's wings, blocks, and interleaf. And I think the theory is not that hard to explain, but when you think about a pattern, for example, and then you start translating that to <laughs> all of these parameters, I mean, I would actually be sitting down and, and making a sketch every time I would have to translate something I have in my head to these parameters. And also what's really annoying in my mind is that, um, you know, whenever I next through this thing, uh, then I have to, um, or rather if I, if I kind of change a parameter, let's say I want to change the blocks, you see that? It's going back to all the fixtures, which is really stupid. I don't like that. So, I built a few shortcuts, which should really help you explore the different patterns that a matrix gives you. And these are down here. Now, it's really interesting because these are just, it's all I got, matrix interleaf plus, or in this case, matrix wings plus. So it's really not anything complicated. Um, it's just some basic commands. And I'm actually gonna turn on my, um, my programming keyboard that I have right here. I'm just gonna clear this. And now the first really cool feature that I built in here is this preview um, chaser. Now this is actually pretty stupid because all it does is literally just execute next. <laughs> Again, this there's no black magic here today. Uh, <laughs> this is really just some very, very basic stuff. Now, I'm going to trigger these values with my programming keyboard just so we can focus on the layout view. But this preview is really cool because now what you can do is increase the inner leaf, for example, and all of a sudden you see patterns emerge. What's really cool is I'm just I'm just keeping keep on pressing this button. You can see that's how it's changing. Only I'm not doing it with a mouse, but rather with my programming keyboard. It's really interesting because I found um, settings for MA tricks which I would have never come up with previously. So I mean there are so many interesting patterns that are merged once you kind of get to play around with these parameters a little bit. Um, let's take wings for example. So I mean that's a really cool pattern, right? Um, now if I increase the blocks a little bit Ooh, a lot thicker. Now that's also a really cool binary pattern, right? So now just increasing the wings as we speak, all of a sudden we have two columns going to each other. Oh, that's really sweet. And after a while, some really more interesting stuff until we reach that point, which is also an incredibly cool pattern in and of itself. So let me just go back on that to a single fixture. What about blocks? I mean, that's gotta be cool, right? I mean, here it's a little messed up right now, but that also gives us some really interesting results. And point being is that with this little tool set, what you can do is, um, you know, either have the preview on or um, just hit these next buttons that I built in here as well. So especially if you have a console, what's cool about this set is that you have all the parameters 
um, you know, right next to each other. And also what you can see here is that it doesn't jump around. You can change the parameters and it's actually a what you see is what you get mode of working. So it's, it's funny, I'm, I'm super proud of this, but it's, it's really not anything special. Um, one last thing I have to show you about this. Um, let me turn on the preview again. If you now go ahead and, for example, find a really cool setting. Actually, let's go back to the wing setting that I found earlier. Where it's kind of, yeah, going into the middle. So if you find a pattern that you like, I built something else for you, which I hope you will really like. So now we can um, use previous and next to kind of find the starting point. I think that's going to be my starting point. Now, usually what you would do is go at full, store it somewhere, go at zero, next. At full, store it somewhere, zero, next. Um, and to kind of get around that, I built this right here, store next. Again, a really easy um, to write macro, it just sets full store at zero, next. But the benefits of that is that if I found a pattern which I really liked, then all I have to do is select an empty executor. And again, I'm just going to use my custom programming keyboard here for easy access. So I'm just hitting store next, store next, create second queue, store next. And now I can clear. And here we go with an easily programmed beautiful sequence. How cool is that, huh? So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, this is really, I think a really, really great way of how you can explore a matrix. And I would suggest you just start right here. Um, when you load the show file from the preview, um, you can go to the macro pool and just export all of these and then import them somewhere else. Um, and like that, you know, explore a matrix for generating patterns in your shows. I think this is a really powerful tool, but the way that it's accessible to you um, is not always very smooth, unfortunately. But with this small set of macros, I think it's gonna be really, really easy for you to explore. I had a lot of fun with this because it's the first time that I stumbled upon a way of how I can um, create something for Grandma 2 visually. Um, instead of you know, kind of having to know what I want and then having it to tell it every every single step. So this is really a cool way of programming patterns in MA2. And so I hope that a lot of people saw this and can make use of this. Um, that's it. And that's also how far I've understood Matrix uh, so far. With effects, I'm still trying to figure it out a bit. Um, so it's definitely not an easy topic, but I'm really hoping that this small tool will help you get into it. So with that being said, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. I'm really trying as hard as I can to upload regularly. Also still going on a mini series on getting you started with the macros. Uh, you can find the video link right here in the outro. And other than that, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or on Twitter. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.